When Adam was created, he was placed into the garden in Eden. Uh, when Eve was made, she joined Adam in the garden of Eden. That was the first human place. Uh, in the Bible, it's the first sanctuary. It's not the place that Adam lived so much as the place where he met with God, where he ate in communion with God. Uh, it's the sanctuary that represents and foreshadows all the other sanctuaries of the Old Testament. But it also represents all the other places of the Old Testament. It's the paradigmatic place. And throughout the Bible, we have references to uh, Eden-like environments. Uh, the whole story of the Bible is, in a sense, as John Milton recognized, the story of paradise lost and paradise regained. It's the story of Adam's expulsion from the garden, his expulsion from the garden along with his bride Eve, and then the, the, the recovery of the garden by the last Adam and his bride, the new Eve, who come into the garden and are restored to one another and come into the garden and are restored to an abundant, fruitful world. We have little glimpses of that restoration throughout the Old Testament. We have garden-like settings. We have garden-like settings in oases, places where there's water, wells, which are often the places where the bride meets her husband, where uh, the servant meets uh, Rebecca, whom uh, he's going to take back to become the wife of Isaac. It's where Moses meets his wife at a well, at a well-watered place. Uh, that's, uh, those settings are there to alert us to the fact that Isaac and Rebekah are like a new Adam and a new Eve. Moses and Zipporah are like a new Adam and a new Eve in a kind of garden-like setting. Uh, we also have orchards and vineyards. Uh, Israel is described as a vineyard in Isaiah 5 and Psalm 80. Israel's like the vine that has been taken out of Egypt and replanted in the land, and that vine grows and encompasses the whole land. Israel is a garden people, uh, supposed to be fruitful, supposed to be producing fruit that delights the Lord, uh, particularly supposed to be producing the, the, the grapes and the wine that, divide, uh, that delights the Lord. Of course, in Isaiah 5, that's not what Israel's producing. Israel's producing the opposite. Uh, but Israel is that garden people, and the place where they're, that they're given to live is a garden-like setting. Uh, the land of Canaan is a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a land of vineyards. It's a land of uh, orchards of uh, olive trees. It's a place of fruitfulness, of wheat and barley, where Israel can go and live. It's a, it's a place that's watered by, uh, by rain from heaven. So it's a garden land. Uh, the, the role of that garden in the original creation is to serve as a kind of model for Adam. Moses went up on the mountain and he saw the pattern for the tabernacle that was supposed to be reproduced at the foot of the mountain, uh, the, the tent. Adam was in the garden and that was to provide a pattern for the way the whole world was eventually supposed to, uh, eventually supposed to be. The whole world is to become uh, identified. The whole world is to become like the garden. Uh, and that's in fact the way uh, the, world is, the, the way the world goes. That is the story of human history. Uh, as we move from the garden uh, expulsion from the garden as, we're, as, as humanity is restored to the garden over the course of history, uh, the garden expands and the garden becomes uh, a land and the garden becomes a people, uh, the, the church that spreads throughout the world and eventually the garden will be coextensive with the cosmos as a whole when we come to a new heavens and new earth where the garden city, the bridal of Jerusalem, descends from heaven and we have the Garden of Eden that has expanded to encompass the entirety of the cosmos.